The Great Depression lasted from 1929 to 1939. It was a tough, tough time, and it hit Detroit hard. It caused severe declines in economic output, severe unemployment, and acute deflation. Its social and cultural effects were staggering. And yet, during that time, great things were happening at the Detroit Institute of Art. This blog is the story of three men. Firstly, William Reinhold Valentiner, a German art historian and critic who became director of the Detroit Institute of Art. It was Valentiner who in California met legendary Mexican muralist Diego Rivera and convinced him to come to Detroit to do his magic at the Detroit Institute of Art, pictured here with his wife, fellow artist Frida Kahlo. During the year they spent in Detroit, he got to love it. She hated it. Remember, this was the Depression. Who would foot the bill? Well, that brings in the third person, Edsel Ford, the only son of Henry Ford. Valentiner was a good friend of Edsel Ford and convinced him to foot the bill for this magical work. The Fords during the Depression also paid for the salaries of the professional staff of the DIA, preventing its shutdown. They were patrons of the arts. The murals would be based on the Ford Motor Company's River Rouge plant, the largest plant in the world at the time. By the way, at the end of this vlog, see some rare footage of Barbara and I visiting Guanajuato in Mexico and stumbling upon the Diego Rivera house. You'll love it. At that point, we had never heard of the man. Composed in fresco style, the five sets of massive murals are collectively known as Detroit Industry, or Man and Machines. They are widely regarded as a great work of art and a unique feature of the museum. But they were also a works of great controversy, as you will see shortly. about four, four main topics. Number one, it's about the people. And these people are the workers in Detroit. And we're talking 1932. the production process. You look at the production process on the wall and it is amazing. Diego loved machines 
and so he was in like fog heaven here. the politics. There are a lot of politics going on here, the politics of communism, and that's where the workers are front and center. This is all, room is all about the workers. And there is the word, communism, with its theme of proletarian struggle. Because Diego Rivera was a communist, and therein lies the controversy. During the famous McCarthy era, the anti-communism era, the murals survived only by means of a prominent sign which identified them as a legitimate art. They further said unambiguously that the political motivation of the artists were detestable. Today, the murals are celebrated as one of the DIA's finest assets and even one of America's most significant monuments. I know the first time I set my eyes on them, I was awestruck. But I was biased because I discovered Diego Rivera in Mexico. And then you have the planet. And you have the planet, you have the coal, the iron ore, the limestone and the sand, those are the minerals that are used to make steel. And then up here you have humanity being nourished by the planet. Right, right. So you've got the people, the production, the politics, and the planet. Those are the four topics that you can come in here and find on these different mm -hmm. panels in Rivera Court. I started out by saying in this vlog that this was a story of three men. Now, are those three men in the murals itself? Well, the answer is yes, as I zoom in on two right there. On the right, William Reinhold Valentiner, the director of the Detroit Institute of Art. On the left, Edsel Ford, only son of Henry Ford. And speaking of Henry Ford, of course, none of this would have happened without Henry Ford. He's right there. Right there with a very stern look of a taskmaster and huge ham hands. Diego Rivera had something about hands. They were all huge and oversized. There's a story there, but I don't know what it is. Now let's have a look at the other hand. Look at that. Man alive. That's a huge ham. <laughs> And with all those people in the murals, did Diego Rivera put himself in there? Yes, only once, and you can see him right there. So Diego Rivera with a personal life that can only be described as you couldn't make this stuff up, leaves his mark here in Detroit in a most impressive way. 
Imagine he died in 1957, but the work lives on. What a great work. The next commission after Detroit was a mural in the RCA building in Rockefeller Center in New York City. That came to a crashing halt when it was discovered that there was a likeness of Vladimir Lenin in the mural. It also led to the cancellation of his next mural, and that was commissioned by General Motors for the World's Fair in Chicago. So times were tough, but he was a fighter. And now, finally, as promised, our visit to Guanajuato, Mexico, and the Rivera House. Ten years ago, I had this crazy idea. Let's have a look at it. Mexico, 23 destinations in which to spend the winter months. A 55-part series of blogs based on our 42-day trip designed to examine 23 long-term stay destinations for expats, snowbirds, and tourists. Our best trip ever because we, meaning Barbara and I, traveled on the excellent Mexican long-distance bus system to 23 fabulous destinations. It was a trip of a lifetime, frankly. Especially good were Guanajuato, San Miguel de Ende, and Zacatecas, the colonial cities north of Mexico City. I'll leave a link at the end of this vlog to photo retrospective number 31. This is what we looked like 10 years ago. Well, Barb still looks good 10 years later. 10 years later, Barbara is back home in Victoria, British Columbia, and I'm temporarily in Detroit as a caregiver for my brother. If you've hung in to this point, congratulations, and thank you for viewing a thumbs up and hitting the alert button on the subscribe. And next Friday, I'm going to take you inside the Detroit Institute of Art for a very special exhibit. Join me next Friday.